All right, hello everyone. Welcome to my dressing room. I'm actually gonna call this my dream room because it really has been a dream to decorate and kind of a dream come true to see come to life. This room has been five years in the making for me, just finding the perfect pieces. And if you've been a subscriber of my channel for some time, you know that I'm really selective when I go out thrifting. And so I'm really, really proud to say that I absolutely love every piece that I brought into this room. And I'm also very proud to say that everything in here is a secondhand thrifted piece minus one, one thing in this room is new. I think that this room is a really great example of why it's important to take your time when you're out finding pieces for your home and find pieces that really speak to you and resonate with you. And for me, when I am thrifting and picking out a piece that I know is going to have a space in my home, I want it to make me feel a certain way. I don't want it to just uh, have a thing, you know, taking up space in my life. I want it to bring some excitement and some, some beauty and some inspiration or peace, you know, whatever that may be to you that you want to fill your home with. I think that, you know, all of these antiques and things have personalities, you know, and it's really exciting when you find something at some dirty old thrift store and you clean it up and you're like, wow, okay, this was the life that this piece was meant to have and create a beautiful space with it and for it by honoring that piece. So I could go on and on about honoring antiques, but let's jump in to this room and all of the pieces in it and why I love it so much. <laughs> I'm just gonna start with the only new thing in this room. And I know you've seen this in the backdrop of some of my videos and I've been kind of keeping it, trying to keep it a secret until this point, but this is Sean Zhang wallpaper and this is a Clematis mural. I discovered her murals on Instagram and I will link a YouTube video of hers down below but she is an incredible artist and her wallpaper murals like if you look really closely at this it looks like a watercolor it's the most beautiful thing and it's like very very high quality the paper is very thick I've done some recent wallpapering projects and I have to tell you that this was actually a, a dream to hang it was it was very easy to hang but her papers are just incredible like the way that they are printed, it looks like real brush strokes on the paper. I've had people come in this room and they thought that this was a hand painted mural and I had to tell them like, no, this is actually wallpaper. I love her pieces. I'm actually gonna do another mural of hers in our bedroom at some point this fall. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. I wanted to have something beautiful and floral in here. I was kind of thinking about trees or weeping willows, something botanical because this room has some really beautiful natural light in the morning. We have like French doors that open up onto the balcony over here and I wanted to bring that feeling of the outside in and kind of a continuation into the space. But I think that's an awesome design trick if you want to kind of elongate your space and make things feel a lot more spacious and bigger than they really are. <laughs> Wallpaper murals are kind of a great little trick to be able to do that. It really does bring that outdoor in extension in into your room because this room, I don't know how big you think it might be, but it's actually not that large. I think it's about 10 by 12 in here. We do have higher ceilings in our house, which is really nice, but we do not have a lot of closet space, which leads me over to my wardrobe over here. So let's talk about that. So this beautiful wardrobe is a 1920s piece from Paris. If it sounds so fancy to say it's from Paris, but I found this at a local consignment shop and this is called a knock down cabinet. I'll see if I can find some footage uh, for you from a couple years ago when we had this delivered, but <laughs> you're probably thinking like, how did, how'd you get this big thing up the stairs? Well, it's called a knockdown cabinet because it literally knocks down into separate little pieces. So this piece up at the top here is one like continuous crown piece. And then the bottom is also one continuous piece, but all the sides and the back walls, the doors, everything uh, comes apart into pieces, which is really neat. That's how I think a lot of Victorian era homeowners got these larger pieces into their home. If you start looking at furniture, like say, you know, if you go to the antique mall and uh, you find this beautiful antique cabinet, take a look at it. A lot of these older pieces are put together like with a peg system and they are also knockdown down cabinets. You know, that's how people got things off up those tiny little stairways and stuff. So this was just really cool. I'd never seen a piece like this before. I was literally haunting this piece for months and 
until <laughs> I like bit the bullet and I'm like, I gotta get this because I will never see another one. I, I went back and forth with what kind of cabinetry I wanted to do in this room. Because we live in a Victorian house, we don't have a ton of closet space. So you kind of have to create it. So we thought about getting some kind of a closet system. People mentioned Ikea, but trimming it out in more of an antique way, but still that was super expensive. And this just made more sense to me to find something like really pretty that I'd never seen before and that is more true to our home and then also my aesthetic. So this is one thing that y'all love to remind me about is my knob and handle situation over here. As you can see, I am missing some handles. I wanted to tell you this little story though. So many of my subscribers were telling me about 3D printing and I was like, no, I'm not putting plastic handles on you know, my cabinet, but come to find out you can do 3D printing in metal. So I was like, okay, cool. So I found a local 3D print shop called them and let him know my situation. And he let me know that it's about four to $500 per handle to get 3D printed. So soak all of that in. <laughs> I was like, Ugh. So what I think I'm gonna do is just move this knob over here. So at least it's like evenly off until I find the perfect thing. I did find some like 1960s hardware, like a full set, but it wasn't, it wasn't perfect. And I would rather just wait and leave it like this until I find the perfect thing. But I wanna show you the inside because uh, I do have all my shirts and then some like jackets and things in here. I finished the inside with an old wallpaper paper on the bottom that my mom and I thrifted at a secondhand store. I think it was like a dollar or two for this brand new roll of wallpaper. And I love it because it has roses. It kind of adds a little pop of color. And it's also perfect because I like to put my seasonal shoes down on the bottom there and it kind of protects the surface of it. I just love this cabinet and it's just so pretty to look at. Like, are you kidding me? It has cherub babies on the top. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this year I'm gonna make some little sachets so when I open it, like it smells good. It should smell like roses when I open it, right? <laughs> So these handbag holders I got on Amazon and I thought this was a really nice way to display bags because if you're a girl, you know, it's like, uh, how are we gonna put our bags nicely to where we can still use them? They aren't getting smushed, you know, et cetera. So I found these double hanging brass handbag stands and they have all kinds of different finishes on Amazon, like, like the more chrome or they have like the, bronzy ones or whatever. I'll link them down in my description for you, but I thought they were just wonderful for displaying bags up here like this because I can see them, I will use them more. And for me, if I can't see my stuff and it's not hung, I'm not gonna get good use out of it, you know, if it's just tucked away. So I love having them up there like that. This little Bombay chest is so cute. I bought this from my neighbor just down the road. They're having an estate sale and I got it for only $60. It's so cool because it has a green marble top and I'd never seen that before and I thought, it just tied in really nicely with the greens and the wall mural over here. So I keep all my pajamas and socks in here cause it's pretty small and I needed something that had drawers in it to keep a lot of my smaller things. And I also have this really beautiful tray on here. I love these kind of mirrored trays. I just got this at a local neighborhood wide rummage sale event. This is so cool cause it has like little ladies on it and these chains and everything that kind of cradle all of your stuff and corral it. It normally doesn't look this clean. I usually have lots of like makeup Makeup and jewelry and things that I throw in here, but you know, we had to make it fancy for today. But I also love to keep like my fragrances of the moment on here. And like for me, whenever the weather changes, you know, it's summertime, you're wearing a certain fragrance. Wintertime, you want a little more like richer, sexier fragrances and stuff. So I like to have them out on display. So that way when I put my clothes on, I'm like, who am I gonna smell like today, you know? I like to get a lot of my fragrances from fragrance.com. So this piece is in partnership with them and it's a total dream because this is somewhere that I've purchased a lot of my luxury fragrances throughout the years. They have all authentic fragrances that are up to 80% off. It's a wonderful place to find like beautiful fragrances that you're after or maybe some of your old favorites at a super discounted price. Oh my gosh, this YSL one that I just got is so beautiful. I'm gonna link this fragrance below for you too because this one has a lot of rose in it and it also has some sandalwood. So it's very like dark and sexy rose. This is like perfect nighttime scent. Anyhow, I love having them up here. Fragrance.com, they literally have any fragrance you can think of and you should definitely look on there first because everyone likes a good deal. And I also got a discount for you if you'd like to check it out in the description box. I feel like I'm always moving these all around the house, but this is part of a trio. So I have two 
two smaller like skinnier ones but this is called a girandola it's an italian piece from the late 1800s and these particular pieces were meant to go on top of a mantle space or kind of like how i have on top of a dresser and then backed up to a wall or a mirror because they're not finished on the back there's no design or anything so it's just plain on the back with this cast metal on the front but they're beautiful this is probably one of the first antiques that i've i've ever purchased that was a splurge i got these gosh I don't know, almost 10 years ago now, I think. I sold antiques at an antique fair and I was like, okay, if I have a successful day, I'm gonna get these from the auction house. So I ended up getting them for $150 for the entire trio, which now thinking about that, that was a really good deal because these can be kind of pricey and you typically don't see them in the full trio. I just love the way the light comes through these big, big spear prisms. And these are all etched with beautiful little florals. I just love the detail in it. I, I truly feel that this room is filled with like forever things for me and pieces that I really haven't seen another one of. And one of these pieces is a mirror. And I think, did I mind the rule? Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> Do you remember my last video? I was telling you that Pete told me that I have like a mirror rule. Well, way back in the day, I made like a whole like mural wall of mirrors and I thought it looked really pretty. I had like 50 mirrors all on a wall and Pete's like, Selena, this is getting out of hand. So he's all, how about one mirror per room? And I don't think I've, I've listened to that rule. Mm -mm. <laughs> so there's two in this room but this beautiful one i got actually at the same auction house as the candelabra but this piece has the original mirror in the backing here and it's stamped 1903 portland i thought that was really special and then i also put like a tiny little sticker on the back and i said you know it was purchased by selena at the auction house for 40 dollars in 2010 so i just thought that would be neat to like see like wouldn't that be neat if if you bought an antique piece to know how much that person paid for it in its previous lifetime like wouldn't that be cool like in the 20s someone paid x amount of dollars i don't know i just thought that would be fun someday someone's gonna get that mirror go what 40 dollars? but i just think this is so cute because it matches my wardrobe it's got two little french cherubs in here and this is all gesso work with bowels of roses it's incredibly fragile it's damaged in parts but it is so busy that you can't tell and that's one fun thing i like about a lot of my antiques that they're so busy see lots going on that maybe you don't really notice any kind of damage to them because there's there's so much going on for the eye you're kind of overstimulated <laughs> what's your decor style overstimulation <laughs> Do you know how many messages I get about my clothing rack? Like people are like, I wanna buy your thing, you know? And I'm like, sorry, I'm not selling her. I did get this, I think about five years ago now. And I went to a local antique mall and this was the fixture in the store. And I have this gift of finding the not for sale items. Hands down, it always happens every time I go out to the antique mall, I fall in love with something that is not for sale. And so I just put it out in the universe. And I said, you know what? If you ever decide to sell this thing, like let me know. And so Tanya, was so sweet she saw my video she's the owner of the antique store and she's like okay i'm ready to sell this piece oh my gosh i jumped in the truck so fast when i got that message i'd never seen a piece like this before and i think that this may have been in a department store back in the day as like a real fixture to display you know bespoke jackets and couture dresses or i mean it really is so pretty and it, it definitely looks like something where you'd want to display something special for me i like to put my seasonal pieces pieces that i'm like okay you need to wear this this week so i usually do things like in color order <laughs> i think that's a little trick that i could share with you too if you're doing some reorg of your closet sometimes just putting things in color order put all the whites together and all the yellows together makes things look organized for me that helps it's it's calms me down it's a little more pleasing to the eye so anyway i, I put out all of my uh things that i want to wear for the month coming up and i kind of switch this out in the summertime it looks extra pretty because i have like lots of dresses out here and stuff which i think is always romantic <laughs> oh my goodness these curtains Oh, I, I really love them. I cannot believe how incredibly cheap they were. I th my subscribers are so nice. You guys always remind me like, hey, you're frugal. You're not cheap. <laughs> but this was cheap. I got all of these curtain panels. I think they're from the 30s or 40s and they look to be kind of like a French type motif on them, but they're so beautiful. They're satin. They're fully lined. They're weighted on the bottom and they're all handmade. I got them at an estate sale for 
I think it was like a dollar or two dollars per panel. Just incredible. This woman moved and as we do, we kind of take our favorite things with us and she just didn't have space for these curtains anymore. I fell in love. Like these actually came to be before the entire room did. And I did not plan this, but I'm, I'm matching my curtains today that's cool but i just hung these up i put some beautiful silk and velvet burnout bows at the top i thought that this dusty blue color kind of tied in and brought your eye back over to the wardrobe because it's that same kind of like dirty is that what i say it dirty blue do we call it dusty blue <laughs> that's probably sounds nicer <laughs> And then um, this incredible curtain rod dowel I got at a thrift store a couple years ago. I only paid $6 for this, including all of the rings and everything. This is the same dowel that you'll see down in our living room. The, the giant nude maiden is hanging on and I, it just looks so pretty and so grand. And I can't believe that I got that for six bucks at a thrift store. It was really an incredible find. I love how this all came together. It's very full, lush and soft and it opens up to our balcony out here it's just it's turned into such a pretty like tranquil space this chair i got at a it was like one of those parking lot garage sales and originally i was gonna sell it in my antique booth because years ago i had a little space in an antique mall and it's like it's one of the, there's another piece like this in our home where i had intentions of putting it in my booth and i was like oh it's so cool i can't get rid of it and this this chair happened to turn into that but it's such a neat piece i'd never seen anything like this before it's all brass and it has little claw feet on the bottom it looks very french i think this is called a chippendale chair when it's like uh, you know it's like it's like a little prissy chair i don't know <laughs> maybe like dainty and just uh. <laughs> but it's got uh, a tufted leather seat which is so worn and crusty looking but i actually think it's really beautiful and kind of a worn like time washed way uh, i got this for five dollars at that garage sale the uh, dressing mirror over here was a Craigslist find. And I, gosh, I drove like, I think two hours away on the freeway. I almost had a panic attack on the freeway trying to get this, but it was kind of worth it. We made it. <laughs> But I think it's so pretty. This is a Hollywood Regency piece. It's not an antique. I believe it's probably from the 1960s, but it's gorgeous and it's all beveled. This is the original glass that's in it. I've never seen a dressing mirror in a gold finish before. You typically see these in, in white or like the oval wooden ones. But when I saw a gold one, I knew like she had to come home with me. So in the truck we went and I hauled her home. I just think it's so pretty. It's nice having a full length mirror to, to stand in front of and to get dressed and and make sure your shoes match your look you know I just think it's a gorgeous piece and it fits perfectly in this corner I have a lot of Louis Icart or Louis Icart depends on how you like to say it I've had friends in the art world who kind of say it different ways but anyhow I think we can all agree that it's so beautiful and romantic Louis Icart did pieces in the art deco era and he has a lot of really beautiful nudes and there's also like an erotica series and then there's also very gorgeous more romantic and soft pieces that he does. If you remember from years ago, I think my mom has this. Yeah, my mom has this in the hallway now, but there's the Papillon series where it's these beautiful nude women and they have their arms out and it's like these gorgeous butterfly wings. Oh my gosh, I love that. I have one of them that's a print, but that is like one of the pieces that I'm always keeping an eye out for or as like a piece from that collection. There's four of them. You know what I mean? We're, we're always like looking for the thing, like that's the thing for me. But this piece, my mom had this in her bedroom and when we moved to this house, she wanted to give me some things to kind of, as like housewarming presents. So I mean, you know, my mom and I are always swapping stuff back and forth, but this one is so beautiful. It's La Belle Rose. How perfect for this room and this big old chunky frame I think my mom and dad framed this one my mom will let me know but my parents always look for really beautiful antique frames at estate sales that's where I learned it <laughs> you know but these chunky old frames you just you don't see very often and to try to get something like this framed in a frame shop would just be astronomically expensive so when you can find frames like this always snap them up because I guarantee you'll find an art piece in the future that you'll want to pop into it I'm not sure what the title is of this one I don't think I've looked it up yet but it's kind of funny because it's got this little cherub baby and this woman is clipping his wings so I don't know if he's like is he getting kicked out of the nest is it just time for a pruning I don't know <laughs> 
<laughs> but my mom gave this to me for Christmas. I believe she also got this at an estate sale. She went to one she said that had multiple uh, Louis Eichhardt pieces in it and this one just like stood out to her and it was beautifully framed. It's matted in this gorgeous peach tone with, which kind of like pulls you know the curtains and everything I have going on throughout the room and the little cherry baby and it. it's so precious but I just love this piece over here. I think what I've what I found what I like to do with decorating because my pieces are so busy and there's a lot to see. I typically don't like to decorate with like a lot of stuff if you know what I mean. So I'm not someone where you'll see a lot of like figurines and knickknacks and, and lots of things because my things consume a lot of mental space <laughs> anyways to look at. So I like my pieces to be able to breathe and have their room just to kind of like be admired on their own. Uh, so I wanted to chat with you about the beautiful chandelier above years and years ago. I keep, how many times I said years ago? Gosh. <laughs> But yes, years ago, I did get this at an estate sale for $40. I asked the owners um, because it didn't have a price tag about it. And they're like, that old ugly chandelier? They were so glad that I was taking this from the home because they thought it was absolutely hideous. And I just fell in love with it. So this little chandelier has been with me through many homes and in many different rooms. And now it's in its forever space. It's the perfect little petite size for this room. I love that it has like really gorgeous climbing roses and these pretty little prisms which catch the morning light. It casts like all these gorgeous rainbows all around the room here in the mornings. It's so pretty. So the ceiling medallion was a really fun project for me. I went out on the back patio and I just sat in the fall sunshine last fall and I pulled out all of the different paints that we had that were interior paints in the garage, all from different rooms in the house. And I thought that was a really great way to paint something and make it incorporate into your entire home, you know, cause this literally has colors from the downstairs living room, my kitchen in it, all the colors. And I just sat with a brush and I blended and I just did my thing. This took hours to do, but I just think it turned out really pretty and soft and almost has kind of an airbrush type finish to it. I usually get uh, my ceiling medallions on this website called Architectural Depot. And they're all these kind of like foamy composite medallions and they're really lightweight, but they mimic the look of historical pieces. And they're just really fun to paint because you can put them, you know, do them in any kind of finish you want, or you can leave them all white. This is such a gorgeous rug that that one of my friends, Rebecca, told me about. She works at a local auction house and this one was coming up for auction consignment and she knew I was looking for a, a round rug for this space and I was like, are you kidding me? This is my dream rug. So I was just beyond excited and grateful that she told me this is coming up to purchase. And this is a Persian Tabriz rug. And the symbol here in the middle is meant to mimic the moon. And then these little, like, uh, I don't know, almost looks like a floral shape, but they're supposed to mimic scales of a fish that come up to admire the full moon when it's risen. So I really love the symbolism in that. And then it's got these gorgeous urns like all around the sides here that kind of have a French look to them. I love this because you typically don't see Persian rugs in, in a pastel color motif like this. They're a little more bold with high contrast and this has all of the colors that I love. It's the perfect size and it's a wool and silk blend. So it's like, it is so soft and all of these like little tiny bits inside of the flowers, they shimmer because that's where like the silk is set into the rug and it, it just feels really good on your feet. And it's nice when you're getting dressed in this room, you know, and you're barefoot to have something kind of really soft to stand on. This is such a beautiful piece. So it's fall right now. So it's kind of chilly, but in the summertime, I like to have this open. This is our, our balcony, which kind of wraps over to our master bedroom as well. But this really turned out to be a beautiful space out here. I'll try to give you a little sneak peek because I really didn't have a chance to give you like the full tour this year because the weather changed by the time we had this all done. But this room has really nice uh, French doors that open up and I can kind of let a nice breeze come through in the summer and have a little fountain out here. So it's just, it's a nice space that kind of just like I said, let's the outdoors in. <laughs> Thanks so much for visiting today. I hope you had fun being whisked away in my little fairy tale room. I hope that you're subscribed so you don't miss another video. And if you'd like to shop some of my romantic finds, you can visit my website, thevintagebombshell.com, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.